Hi there, and welcome to week two of our Who Are You series as we're looking at the Instagram... <laughs> what am I thinking? The in. Enneagram. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to week number two in our Who Are You series. I'm back here again this week with... Emily Bracken. I appreciate her joining me for a little interview time here because I'm learning a lot from Emily and she is very perceptive about the Enneagram tool. That's what we're looking at. It's a tool. You can use a tool positively. You can use a tool negatively. We want to use it positively to, for growth, for spiritual growth as we become more self-aware and for relational growth as we understand each other better. And I want to start with a verse from Psalm 68 verses five and six. It's a description of about God. In fact, I'm going to start in verse four. It says, sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds, rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. And now here's one aspect of his character. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. There are so many different characteristics of our great God. One of them is his power and his strength, and the fact that he uses that power and strength in a controlled way for our good. And one of the ways he demonstrates that is he has a heart for those who are powerless, those who need defense, those who need protection, those who are um, misfits and marginalized and so on. I love that about God. I love everything about God, but this is one characteristic that really resonates with me and maybe because I'm an eight and this is a characteristic of an eight. I didn't know that for a long time. I didn't know that the reason that I'm so passionate maybe about defending orphans and even adopted one and all these compassion kids down in Ecuador who are so poor and I want to see them, their lives better. I didn't know that maybe that's, you know, it could be true for everyone, but that is one of the characteristics of the personality of an eight. And we see that in God. And we're going, to, we're going to notice that in all of these numbers because they all reflect a different aspect of God's character. So as we get into this, we're starting with eight, by the way, because, not because it's most important and not because it's mine, but uh, this book I recommend starts with eight. So I, we just start, started with eight because we're dealing with the uh, gut triad first. So we're going to be doing eight, nine, and one first who, that are all in that triad. So as we think about eights, um, first of all, you may there may be an eight in your group right now, and there may not be, but I know there's an eight in your life. It might be a family member, it may be, uh, might be your boss. <laughs> Very well could be, because a lot of eights are leaders. It's not the only number that leads, but it is very often true. So let's start by some things to know about eights. Okay. So things to know if you're not an eight, but you have an eight in your life. Yeah. Okay. Um, some things that you probably already know is that they're strong and they are good leaders and they're sometimes bossy and they like to tell you what to do. Um, but some things that you maybe don't know um, is that it's very hard for them to be vulnerable. And maybe you do know this because maybe you think back and you see that they haven't actually shown that softer side. Um, but I think a lot of people don't realize that it actually is in there. And so they, they get this idea that to be soft is a weak, is weak, uh -huh. or to be to be tender, to be emotional is weakness, and so they want to put on a tough exterior. And so to the rest of the world, I think it's easy to think that that part's not in them, that they're just all hard, that they're just all tough. Um, but really, that outer shell is protecting a more tender side in, inside mm -hmm. of them. And so to know that your eight does have that softer side in them um, and that maybe they don't show it to everybody, but if they do share that with you, that that's kind of a really big deal. Yeah. It, <laughs> I, I mentioned this book and at the end of each chapter, this is not the only book we're reading. We got stacks of them on this subject, but this one is very engaging and fun. And at the end of this, it, it has each chapter, there's a list of things that would be steps to grow paths for transformation for each number. And one of them, it says, to recover a piece of your natural childhood innocent, tend and befriend your inner child. 
I know you don't have time for that sort of crap, but it helps. <laughs> That's exactly how an eight feels about that. But it is, it is important to think about that because, you know, when we drop the masks and we get to our real authentic self, um, yeah, with eights, there's tenderness and we need to learn not to hide that. Yeah. Um, second thing that maybe you should know is that those eights don't always know how harsh they come across. Um, this was helpful to me in that, uh, you can give them, um, some grace in that if you know that they're not trying to be so harsh, that sometimes they're just feeling so passionate mm -hmm. or sometimes their level of voice might sound normal to them and to you it sounds like they're yelling at you. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's okay for them to do that, um, but I feel like understanding that about them helps me to give them a little more grace. You know, I never, I never yell, <laughs> but I would get accused of yelling Yeah. because when I'm passionate, um, my, my tone can be offensive to some people. Uh, <laughs> in, at the beginning of each chapter in this book, it, talk, it describes a healthy eight or whatever number, an average, and an unhealthy. And I, I really like that because that helps us see, do I have any of these characteristics or have I had of the unhealthy? Because we all want to move to healthy. Mm -hmm. And I know I can relate to that because my wife has often over the years said, watch your tone. You sound, you're, start, you're, you're, you're speaking harshly, and I'll say, no, I'm not. I'm speaking passionately. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm passionate, this is how I talk. Forget my tone and listen to my words. And you say, no, change your tone. So <laughs> you're right. And, but we can learn to try to back that off and be more um, thoughtful in the way we express ourselves. Well, and I think also for eights to, that's something eights don't always know also. And so if eights can start to pay attention to that, they mm -hmm. might start to actually care about that because mm -hmm. a lot of your words are not going to get heard if you are talking to someone who can't get past They'll shut power. down because of that Yeah, or the they'll tone. be afraid. Yeah. And so then they don't actually hear what you're saying. So louder doesn't always mean clearer. Yeah. And so if you want to be clear and direct, sometimes you have to back that back. Become more self-aware. <laughs> um, the third thing that I have found in studying eights that um, has really helped me is to understand that one way that an eight loves you is by protecting you. Mm. Um, they're not necessarily going to be super lovey-dovey, outwardly affectionate, telling you all the time how much they love you. Because um, if they told you once, they, and they haven't changed <laughs> their mind. <laughs> no, well, I'm also, and if you think about that, that, that requires a lot of vulnerability to be affectionate. Mm -hmm. um, so they might not show it that way, but they are going to show it in that they're going to protect you. Um, and so as a kid, I had an older sister who was an eight, um, and she was not super lovey-dovey. She only hugged me when my mom forced us to make up and hug. Um, and so I often felt like, um, she, she didn't love me. Um, and then I also felt like she was, um, so I don't want to cry on the camera. <laughs> oh, come on. Just tell it. it it's, it's sweet. I it's a great story. I also felt like she was <laughs> harsh in that I... The way I interpreted her harshness was that I was not good enough, um, that I couldn't do it right, that I didn't have the strength. So there was hurt associated there with that. There was hurt because of the way I interpreted how she would always swoop in and help me. She would always swoop in and do it for me, mm -hmm. or she would always, um, in a group, she would step up and talk for me even. And learning this, that that's how she was protecting me because she, she loved me. And so... <clears throat> And it's emotional for you to talk about it because it's deep feelings. It, it changed is. your perspective on her when you learned about an eight, right? It is. It, it totally shifted. It wasn't that she, oh, come on, Emily, you can't do it. It was, I, I see she's struggling and I love her enough. I'm going to go in and I'm going to protect her. And so it's just totally shifted some things with my sister. And you look back on your childhood and see it completely different because of understanding this. I example after example this. of her loving me. Wow. Instead of example after example of me not meeting her. And so when that light bulb went on and it changed your perspective, what did you do? So I you texted reached out her, to her and I, I, 
for a while, every um, podcast I listened to about eights made me cry. Hmm. Um, so I texted her, and I said, um, you just felt it's supposed to make me cry. <laughs> This is going to make a good video. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, just, I texted her and I said, you know, all those years, I didn't realize how much you were standing up for me because you loved me. Mm, that's a powerful story. And, you know, she's an eight, so she didn't write back a whole <laughs> touching moment, but she did write back with some hearts um, nice. because it was like, yep, that's right. Cool. That is a great story. Thanks for being vulnerable and sharing that with us. <laughs> <laughs> so... A few things that everybody should know about eights. Um, what if there's an eight in the room? Uh, what are some things eights should know about themselves? Um, so the one we talked on, that you don't know how harsh you're coming across and that your message might be lost because of how harsh mm -hmm. you're coming across. Also, I think eights should look into um, that strength comes in lots of shapes and sizes. So sh strength which is what you're good at, is not always um, the most powerful demonstration in the moment. It can also be a tender strength. Mm. And so I consider, um, you know, say like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's the strongest, has the strongest grip back in his day. If he was to approach a child and say, shake hands, he's not going to apply all of his pressure. Mm to that mm -hmm. kid's hand or he would hurt the kid. Break it. And so strength often comes in knowing how to apply your strength and differentiate mm -hmm. it based on the situation. Mm. And so it's not full force, full force all the time. So maybe H should question um, what, how much strength to use in the moment and that mm. holding back is also a strength. That's interesting because the word for meekness in the Bible, it sounds like weakness, mm -hmm. but... Meekness, the, the original word in the Bible, is a word that's used for strength under control, yes. like a stallion. Huh. A stallion was in biblical times was considered meek. We wouldn't use that word today. We would say powerful. But it's like when they're, they're trained, they're powerful, but they're under control. So kind of yeah. is a, a metaphor there that's good. What else? Um... I think that's all I had. Okay, that you know that's good. Um, I I can testify that there's times where I say something, it might be uh, come across a little harsh, or it might even be a little a joke, some humor that maybe I shouldn't have used that hurt somebody's feelings, and I don't realize it. I didn't mean to hurt somebody's feelings. So I think it's also helpful if you're an eight to have people that you trust who can tell you if you are doing that. And, you know, for example, Pastor Hollis is in meetings with me a lot. And occasionally he said, you know, you ought to check in with so-and-so because I just from body language, I think they might have uh, stepped on him a little bit there without thinking about it or knowing it. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I'll go right down and do it because I, I don't want to do that. And but I don't always realize it. Sometimes yep. I pick up on it and can correct it right then. But sometimes I don't. So there's an idea for you. Yep. And so let's talk about how to love eight, because we want to do that with every number. We want to learn how to love people better according to what their wiring is. Yes. I think we often try out of our own way of seeing to love people the way we think they want to be loved or the way we would want to be loved. Um, and so we will try to throw out specific reasons each week. Um, specific ways that you can love them that you might actually think that doesn't look like love um, but because it hits exactly the way that person is wired it's they're gonna feel it like love mm. um, so one suggestion for the eights um, would be to be direct they want you to be direct they want you to be honest don't beat around the bush they don't want you Get to beat the around point. the bush what's the point so <laughs> you may feel like oh I don't want to say that it might hurt their feelings or I don't I'm not sure what they're going to think about it. And so you might approach it in like a uh, uh, kind of way. Your eight wants you to be direct. I feel like this. I feel like I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And so it might it might be a push for mm -hmm. you to be direct with your eight. Um, but they're going to respect they respond that. Well to that. They're going to yeah. respond well to that. They're going to feel loved and seen in that. Um, another one is that they want you to stand up for yourself. Um, when they approach you with something... They don't want you to just back down and take it. 
they want you to stand your ground if you don't agree. Mm-hmm. Um, Push often, back. Often eights think they're right. Um, if you think they're right, great. If you think they're wrong, stand up for yourself. Does That's that, good does advice. That it is good yeah. advice. Yeah. I, I, you know, some numbers, if somebody pushes back strongly on something, are going to back away and feel negative about that in some way. Mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, with an aide, if you push back, they want to, they respect the fact that you have your own stand mm-hmm. and might even compromise or end up agreeing with you. They're not like, unless they're unhealthy, they're not so bullheaded. It's my way or the highway. I think often because they are so direct, other numbers and other types um, feel like when they speak their opinion, they want everybody to back down. But really, they're just speaking their opinion, Mm -hmm. and so then they're open for everybody else to speak their opinion. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, The last one is kind of what you said, um, to for sure tell them if they're coming on too strong. Mm. Uh, but only if you are in a respected place in their life, yeah. I, would, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I welcome that from certain people. Yeah, certain people. <laughs> but I think that's a way, instead of getting offended by it. So yeah. if you are in a close relationship with an eight, instead of just being offended and hurt, speak up and say, when, when you talk to me that way, it hurts me. Mm. Um, and that's a way to love them. Yeah. Because they're, not, they're most likely not trying to hurt you. No, that's good. Well, I think you're going to have a good discussion. I hope so. And uh, thank you, Emily, for being a part of this setup. And so until next time, have a good one. (laughs) 